Hey fam, how y'all doing today? Welcome back to History Highlights with Lane and Happy Black History Month. Thanks to the godfather of black history, Carter G. Woodson. I will leave a link in my description of Carter G. Woodson and how he founded Black History Month. It's worth taking a look at. Always remember, you are loved and you are enough. Also, thanks to those that have donated to my channel and thanks to those that will donate to my channel. In this video, we will highlight Abe Hawkins. The mysterious life of a slave who became the most celebrated jockey in North America. There were two famous men known as Old Abe in the mid 19th century. One of them had the last name Lincoln. The other, for much of his life, had no last name. He was the most celebrated jockey in the land in his day. A man born a slave, sold along with horses he rode. His history guessed at, half a name, traded as livestock, but astride a horse, he was a prince. We don't know who his parents were or for sure where he was from. Though Mississippi is touted, or even whether he was traded or sold before Duncan Kenner, the owner of Ashland Plantation in Louisiana, purchased him for $2,300 in 1854. The sale was listed in the paper of the time, along with other bloodstock bought and sold. It was a considerable sum, but he was already by then known as a considerable rider. The arrangement by which he was allowed to ride races and travel to meets is unknown. The picture accompanying this piece is the only known image of a jock who became famous from south to north to east to the vast semi-tamed continent of North America. He was a small man, only the size of a child, and he had a speech impediment, which may have contributed to his silent manner, but he could talk with horses. He became known as the Black Prince and the Dark Sage of Louisiana. The notorious well an unbeaten racer, but a horse no other man dare touch or try to handle, much less ride, would stand still under old Abe until the rider closed his heels on him. Then he would spring to life and race, with Abe buried in his mane, set forward and out of the saddle, maybe the first to do so, which makes him perhaps the father of all modern day jockeys. The Civil War made him a free man, he went north to Saratoga a year later, took the last name Hawkins, and was famous before he arrived. He won the third running of the Travers in 1866 on Miro, a horse trained by another ex-slave, Ansel Williamson, the man who just under a decade later would train Aristides to win the very first Kentucky Derby. In a time when race results did not regularly include riders' names, old Abe's would often be found beside his mount's name, whether they won or not. He made money and saved it. He seems to have been a man of modest appetite. A lifetime of ration basic food probably stayed with him. There is no record of a wife or children. His parents are unknown. His quiet manner probably left him lonely. With his stutter, lack of an education, and slight bearing, he probably found it easier being around horses. Maybe he was drawn to them for this reason. Many people who carry pain within them find solace in those big, noble creatures. Perhaps they were the only other slaves he spent time with. He whipped those slaves for their white masters, and it made him famous and rich. We didn't know if it made him happy. Kenner lost his 500 slaves in the Civil War and with it his wealth temporarily. It is said that old Abe sent word to Kenner that he would help him if financial assistance was sought. Who knows if that happened? What we do know is that when old Abe became sick with tuberculosis that would take him, he returned to Ashland Plantation where he was raised a slave. It is said Kenner tended to him as a parent to a child and after his death in 1867, he was buried, not in the slave cemetery, but in a brick tomb under a mighty oak overlooking the training track of Ashland. Did he return to Ashland as a son returns home though, in need? No, 
He returned to Ashland because the place he was a slave was the only home he knew. His master and fellow slaves, the only people he had ties with. What was freedom to a man born a slave, taken from his parents, allowed no possessions, given no choices, no education, no rights? What was freedom really to a man already older and sick, probably scared and tired and unable to convey his own feelings and thoughts, inarticulate except when astride the mighty beast? Only then did the black prince have something to say to the world. Then he was bigger than other men. Then other men cheered him and sang his name, and he lived in pages of newspapers and telegraphs. But once he stepped off the animal, he slipped once again into the shadows. He was lucky to have died in some comfort, some care taken off his carcass, some memory of him to live on. Most slaves didn't experience that. I doubt if Kenner made such fuss about his 500 other slaves. I don't know what the morality of owning other animals is. Perhaps future generations will judge us harshly breeding these animals for our sport. I do not know that this is why we have moral duty towards these animals, raised in captivity by us, fed by us at our leisure, forced to labor for us, sold and traded by us. Many experts think now that horses, to a lesser or greater degree, possess probably the same six basic primary emotions we feel. Fear, disgust, anger, happiness, sadness, and surprise. And that they are adroit in recognizing those same emotions in us. If they have the same feelings as us, the same emotions, then our moral duty to their well-being is high while we put them to work for our purposes. Old Abe and Will bound together, slaves together, talking together as they thundered down the track, whispering in the wind, shaking a fist to the world in those memories. Angry Will and quiet, sad old Abe. So there you have it. A little bit of history on Abe Hawkins. One final note on Abe Hawkins. We do not know when he was born, but he died in 1867, and he was once enslaved at Ashland Plantation, became noted 19th century African-American jockey, rode the horse to victory over Lexington in 1854 in New Orleans inducted into the Louisiana Racing Museum Hall of Fame in 1997. Be well, stay safe, and stay in peace, not pieces. Word of the year, forward, forward, forward. Hit that bell so you will know every time I upload a video. Love y'all, fam. See you soon.